Mr. Chairman, and thank you all for being with us today. Uh, Ms. Therrett, I want to ask you about um, how we continue to have providers who have as many as five documented cases of delivering substandard care. And as I've looked through the proposed market pay system, I really, it's hard to square how we would give local leaders more flexibility when we have an issue with having these providers that give substandard care. And then what I'd like to know is, do you have a policy? Is there a policy in place that removes these providers and puts them on a do not rehire list. So if you will just walk me through that. Senator Blackburn, I'm going to ask Ms. Bongiorni to speak to the uh, processes that are used to address that substandard care and how it would be applied in this market pay system. Great. Sure, thank you for the question, Senator Blackburn. Uh, we do have processes in place to do ongoing monitoring of the competencies of our providers as well as focused evaluations if there is a concern raise. Those processes are standard and consistent with how they operate in the private sector. Uh, and so the number where we have substandard care being provided is a very low fraction of our workforce. Uh, and absolutely, we would uh, be making sure that we take those seriously and address them through normal disciplinary processes uh, through the medical executive committee in each case. The compensation structure is not tied to that specifically. If we had somebody who was uh, in a situation where they were providing substandard care, we would uh, address that through disciplinary processes or removing their privileges. Uh, the compensation system is designed to operate for the vast majority of providers who are providing excellent care to veterans. Uh, and so we would look at performance indicators, certainly, uh, in, in that evaluation of setting pay. Okay, and then how do you apply this and how do you get a waiver on the cap for physicians and dentists and professionals, medical professionals that do not provide patient care but are on staff? What is your differentiation there? So we would continue to use the pay table structure that we already have okay. for physicians, uh, dentists and podiatrists, uh, and potentially optometrists if the law, if new law passes. Um, we usually clinical providers are uh, accounted for in the first few pay tables, and then the last one is for supervisory type of physicians that may not provide direct care. So it's uh, we do an evaluation based on how they might be paid in the private sector. So you use comp. some subjectivity and flexibility on that table. Yes, there are pay okay. ranges for right. each one of them. Okay, that is great. Uh, thank you for that. And then I've got a question on the PACT Act because VBA has talked about the number of additional claims processors that are going to be needed to handle this and to handle the call centers for what they're expecting from the PACT Act. And we've discussed um, personnel and being able to meet that demand some with the secretary. And it's hard to kind of look at this. So many people are still working remote. And then we have this huge backlog. And then we're expecting to have this influx. So walk me through. Um, the hurdles that you have in hiring and getting people trained and what the problem is addressing this in a timely manner. So Senator Blackburn, specific to our Veterans Benefits Administration, um, they have done exceptional work with their on-site hiring events and being able to staff to the levels that they need to process the PACT Act claims. Uh, productivity last year was you know, at record levels in terms of having a hybrid work environment where they were able to work on-site as well as telework and be able to deliver those benefits to um, those who are filing those claims. In terms of training, we are working very closely with the Veterans Benefits Administration to make sure they have the resources that they need so that they are not 
not taking folks off the lines to conduct the training and putting them back on to process claims. So we're actively working with them and using the direct hire authority that the Office of Personnel Management gave us for over the next five years to be able to hire up to 15,000 claims examiners. So really working closely with them to make sure that they have the resources on board using every authority available in the PACT Act. And of course, having people still working remotely, you've got this backlog that is enormous. I mean, I, I'm having a tough time squaring what you all are saying you're doing and not getting a specific timeline and then looking at this backlog that continues to grow, continues to grow. And it is a tremendous frustration when we have veterans that are waiting 100 days in Tennessee for a primary care appointment. It is so unacceptable when they cannot get to professionals within that system. And then there is hesitancy to do community care. We have a we have a lot of frustrated veterans, but we appreciate the work that you're doing, and uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator King. Uh, 